Uh, tonight, we take a moment to highlight Respect Life Month. The annual October celebration provides an opportunity for the faithful to reflect more deeply on the dignity of every human life. Joining me now on Skype is Archbishop Joseph F. Nauman of the Archdiocese of Kansas City in Kansas. He is also the chairman of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Committee on Pro-Life Activities. Your Excellency, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for your time today. I know this year's theme is Live the Gospel of Life. Can you talk more about the importance of that theme and its relationship to St. John Paul's encyclical Evangelium Vitae? Yeah, so this year on March 25th, we observed the 25th anniversary of the promulgation of that landmark teaching by John Paul, the Gospel of Life. So we felt it was a natural thing to commemorate that and to challenge people not only to know what the gospel of life is, but to live the gospel of life. And um, at the core, what John Paul said, the core of the gospel of life is to understand the value that God placed on every human life. And that's revealed to us on Calvary. That's a, a God who died for us <laughs> so much that he value each and every one of our lives. And it's that same value for human life, no matter what age or stage of development, no matter what our intellectual or physical capabilities might be. Uh, it's that view of life that we're called to, to live and witness to in our world. I know that you have spoken with us before about walking with moms in need, the initiative. How is that going, and how is this nationwide year of service helping to support and to further build a culture of life? Well, like everything, it's, it's been affected by COVID-19, and but it's a very flexible effort initiative. And so some dioceses and parishes are, are getting on board a little bit later than we originally had planned, but that's okay. The need goes on. And our goal in this was to ask every diocese, every parish, first of all, to become knowledgeable about the services that are available to women in their diocese, their parish, that have an untimely pregnancy, so that our parishes could really be places that anyone could go and be connected with those services. And then also to look for what are the gaps? <laughs> what are the things that we're not providing well at the current moment? and to make this a year where we really try to fill some of those gaps. So it is um, it is going and our, our diocese and our parishes have embraced this effort and we're excited about the additional support that it's gonna bring to women in a difficult pregnancy. Um, you mentioned some of the gaps. Would you mind talking about that, some of the things that you need? Yeah, for instance, it, it, that will vary from place to place, but in some places, for instance, we've noticed that here, that we we want to increase the residential services available. So a woman with an untimely pregnancy that really needs a place to stay that will provide for her and help her through the pregnancy, but help equip her um, not only to give birth to the child, but for her and her child to thrive after the birth. Um, in some cases, it's just more support that's needed for our crisis pregnancy centers that are already there. And some of the financial and other kinds of material or volunteer support that we can bring. As we spend this month in deeper reflection on the dignity of every human person and the value of every human life, what should we consider and what are some of the ways we can put our faith into action in helping others? Well, uh, in case your viewers hadn't noticed, we are in an election year this year. So that's one way that the bishops have invited us all to to realize that voting is a, it's a moral choice. It's an important part of living out our Catholic faith to be active citizens, engaged citizens, and certainly to bring the values of our Catholic faith, the values of the gospel into the voting booth with us as we choose our candidates. In our cover letter this year for Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship, uh, the bishops noted that abortion and the protection of the unborn remains a preeminent priority for us. And we give three reasons for that, because it attacks life when it's most vulnerable, it happens in the context of the family, and therefore destroys the bonds that are most sacred, the bonds between parent and child, 
and then the sheer numbers that uh, almost a million children, American children killed every year by abortion, more than 60 million since its legalization of 1973. So certainly that's one of the things that we need to do is be knowledgeable voters, well-informed voters. And um, there are many issues that we're concerned about. You know, the, the culture of life is not just about, the gospel of life is not just about protecting the unborn. It makes us concerned about the immigrant, those that are in poverty. Um, it, it makes us concerned about every, the dignity of each and every human person. But as the bishop says, uh, abortion for the reasons stated remains our preeminent priority. Well, Your Excellency, you know, I, thank you so much for your time today. We always appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks.